Yo, 10 free draws on Summer Kiaru banner. Let's freaking go. And that, my friends, is what you call a blunder. If you already have Summer Kiaru, you better not be hitting that button. Because then, you won't be able to hit that button for Summer Tamaki. And so hopefully, you did not become a dum-dum like Lace. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today I wanted to talk about Summon Tamaki. It's time for the Wet Cat 2 to come into the game. For everyone who is not aware, we do have the Summon Tamaki banner coming up. Well, hopefully by the time this video releases, she'll be up. And hopefully you guys did get my message on the YouTube communities to actually not roll your 10 pool on the Summer Kiaru banner if you already have Summer Kiaru. Because if you do that, you are not going to get the 10 pool on the Summer Tamaki. So beware guys, beware. However, back to it again. So Summer Tamaki is coming very very soon and so i thought maybe it's time to do a character evaluation because what i failed to notice is that a lot of like these team comps like in the future from this chinese spreadsheet it's going to be a lot of the red-haired goddess kana and so i think it's probably best we get ourselves familiar with the wet cat too and so like let's just jump into it then so i think most of you probably have heard of summer tamaki by now especially when we talked about her so much in like one of the cb videos and it was really funny because we didn't actually even get to use summer tamaki so as you can see here almost every single comp actually features features her. But that's okay, we can start talking about her today. And so, let's have a look at her skills first. So on Summer Tamaki, what we have on her UB is inflicts physical damage to random nearby enemies four times. And this bad boy has a range of 480 and it's random enemies. So, uh, like, that should kind of raise some red flags for you. And what I mean by red flags is that this kind of makes it like a little bit unreliable when there is multi-targets. And where exactly are there multi-targets? Arena! And so kind of keep that in mind. However, there are a few different like mechanics that you can actually use to take advantage of this but yeah in a nutshell to be honest neko neko summer rave is just like pretty much pure dps and so as you can imagine against a boss it is pretty much just doing like big dps especially because it's landing that attack on that boss four times very very straightforward and so let's move on to the next skill summer beach absorb so this bad boy is very very similar to your traditional tamaki skill it is the tp drain because you actually reduce the enemy's tp and then you give yourself that amount of tp now this is pretty freaking lit so for example, if your Tamaki is level 100, so this is going to give 125, 165 TP. And guys, keep in mind that the maximum TP gauge like that you need to activate your UB is actually 1000. And so with this, not only are you reducing the TP of the boss or like the enemy hero up the front, because as you can see, it says it targets the frontmost enemy. But on top of that, the skill gives your Tamaki more TP so that she can actually UB more often. Very, very good skill. However, the use cases for this skill has kind of like diminished, especially because this is not like a homing skill anymore and what i mean by homing and well actually maybe i should call it targeted but like so base tamaki actually aims the like the magic attack units right this bad boy while still really good it only aims the front most enemy and so obviously the utility changes right so most of the time in arena you're going to be hitting the tanks with this and there are actually a couple of different use cases that actually come to mind when i start looking at this guy in the context of clan battle you're reducing the boss's tp and so what that means is that you're actually going to be changing the boss's ub timings and so the most important important part about this is that like you can't really replace summer tamaki with like just another dps because it's actually going to change the timings of every other character in that comp as you guys have probably learned by now a lot of our ubs are actually dependent on the boss hitting us with their ubs for example we've got like wyvern or griffin and they got to use like their big bomb or they got to use like their whirlwind before like our makoto and kari are actually able to get their ubs off if you introduce a summer tamaki in there randomly like we might not actually be getting that ub anymore so it's not like you can just throw summer tamaki into like any comp and then like hope that it'll work but honestly if you're more on like the casual space then like i would say summer tamaki is in general a really good boon and why i say that is because like if you are delaying the boss's ub it means that you're actually going to be taking less damage overall hopefully and so it should technically boost the survivability of the rest of your team and so what we're actually going to see next if we go over to skill 2 is she is actually a fat juicer she's got a physical attack and an action speed buff to herself oh my god wow this is really cool is this a new feature but essentially these massive massive buffs especially the action speed because the action speed is so so good i'm pretty sure with the action speed buff and the attack pattern she's actually able to maintain this ice break skill like a hundred percent of the time and so what this means is that she's always going to be going super super fast just like sonic okay on the other hand what we have is a self physical attack buff so let's take level 100 again 11 times 100 is about like 1100 that is freaking freaking massive and so guys just for reference you can see that my kari has 4.8k physical attack 
and let's say because Summer Tamaki is kind of the same archetype like a frontline attacker, if she has around like the same attack, which she probably will, she is going to be getting like a 20% increase in her physical attack. This doesn't necessarily translate into like a 20% increase in damage, it might be more, it might be less depending on multipliers. But really that is actually such a drastic amount of attack to be getting. Other than that, not overly much to talk about here, it's very very simple I think. But yeah, especially with this guy over here, you can see why she does so much more damage than your base Tamaki. As well as a lot of the other units to be honest because she is constantly on like speed. I'm also relatively sure that she is always on the attack buff and so what that means is that everything is going to be like a fat juicer, okay? And on top of all of that, you've got her you being more frequently, especially because of this guy over here. Faster actions, more base attack, you've got more TP coming in, you've got more UBs, it's just more damage overall. And then on top of that, you slap on the bad boy, that is the EX skill, which is an increase to physical damage. Honestly, with all of this, like you can see why she is such a good attacker. And then bam, 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 let's have a look at the bond level bonus. We've got more physical attack. If we go over to regular, oh my god. Mmm mint and then mechanic as well which we will eventually get more physical attack it's it's all physical attack here boys and so again as you can see here we've got the initial pattern we've got the two with the massive massive buff and then we're going to be going to the one and then we're going to get another two over here and because this skill two is increasing your action speed by a hundred percent i'm pretty sure you get through all of these actions really fast and then you get it again and then here's the interesting part about the loop pattern so we've got the skill two into an auto into an auto into the skill two again and so what that means is that the gap between this skill two and this skill two is really only two actions and so while speed buffs don't actually stack together and so for example like your Kokoro and your Monica those two speed buffs actually don't play nice together what we are going to have is an overlap of the physical attack buff I'm pretty sure when you get to the end of the first loop and then you come back over here for your second loop and then you use your skill 2 you're going to have a pretty fat physical attack buff probably about 2.2k I personally don't think that the overlap is going to be overly long but like you know sometimes you might be able to get your UB off in that little overlap or maybe there is no overlap and I'm just talking out of my but because like it takes her more than 12 seconds to actually get from here over to here. I doubt it guys. I freaking doubt it. And so hopefully all of that has shown you why she is such a good attacker as well as providing some level of utility and survivability with her skill one. And so I think I want to start talking about well like how long does she actually last in the meta? I would say especially because we do not have Kana. There is a pretty fat chance that we are actually going to be using Summer Tamaki for quite a while. However, the majority of the timelines are probably not going to be found here. There are some but there aren't that many. Especially when we come up to here like we've missed the 10th month and by this time Ray is actually in because she's got her UE and so I think for me personally there's a lot of research to be done especially on the JP or the KR service who did not actually get Kana but anyway back to it I think she is going to be seeing a lot of CB use in these next few months and just because she probably does so much more damage than your base Tamaki she is probably going to be the preferred unit for like when you're tanking in CB I don't know if you guys remember but like in one of the mage comps back on crab we actually had a Tamaki as the tank I would say that the summer Tamaki would do the same thing but better because she does more damage right but yeah that's kind of it from me from a cb point of view so just to summarize i think she's going to be very useful in the next few months and i think she will have niche cases for like the next year or two however what i am more interested in is like well does she feature in arena at all and so let's start thinking about that so we've got defense and we've got attack from a defense point of view i think she is like not really that strong and it's because again she is no longer targeting those magical units and so pairing her up with miyako actually just does nothing i think and so what exactly is is she and so I think I actually forgot to talk about one thing which was her position her position typically does not matter for CP however it matters a lot for arena and so as you can see she is standing between the base Tamaki and the Eriko or like the summer Peko. so that should give you like a pretty good idea as to where she is she is standing in the front but she is more like towards the back of the front and so yeah guys keep this part in mind because it will be very important very very soon but yeah essentially she is kind of like a frontline attacker that does like attacks front to back right and so if I was to describe other units that are kind of like her so I'm talking like heal I'm talking Makoto, I'm talking like the Kaori, I'm talking Rei, so like frontline, and they only do like front to back damage. There is absolutely no damage that goes off onto like some mage somewhere. And so now you think next, where exactly do I use these units like Makoto or Kaori or Hiyori? In arena, typically speaking, the places that you would actually use this is against the store comps. And so here is an example store. So we've got the Misato store over here, and typically speaking, the counter that I use is this boy over here. I know it's packed with UEs, but this still 
still actually works, guys. Sometimes, sometimes. It depends on if your Kari misses or hits or whatever. But essentially, what I'm seeing here is that we have a whole bunch of like defense downs as well as single target damage to fight from front to back. You're trying to do enough damage so that you can actually burst through each of these characters one by one. And on top of that, you hope that the heal is not enough to actually like sustain these guys up the front. And so of the attacking team, you've got Jun and Makoto doing the defense down. And then you've got Kari who is actually doing the single target physical attack damage. If, for example, your Kari was still at like two or three stars or something and you actually pulled your Sama Tamaki, I would actually try something like this except with the Sama Tamaki instead of the Kari. And the potentially cool thing about that is that Sama Tamaki is actually going to live behind Makoto and so Makoto is going to be positioned too. And so Makoto is going to be taking that blind from the Maho. What that does mean is that your Sama Tamaki technically is free to do a whole bunch of damage unblinded. Now this may or may not be good because I haven't tested this right but like your Makoto when she UBs she also does the defense down. And if she misses that then that is well that's not really good news right. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to impart on you guys here is like well where exactly can I use Sama Tamaki? Where exactly are the scenarios where there is somebody who is kind of replaceable right? And so another example of this especially with one of our newest joiners Sama Kiaru. We've actually got Kyoka over here and a lot of the time Kyoka can be substituted with Sama Kiaru. And so yeah that's kind of the idea that I'm trying to toss around. Where you see the Kari, where you see the Hiyoris, you can probably use a Sama Tamaki. Now I want to talk about some interesting interactions, in particular her UB. You see that her UB actually does the physical damage to random nearby enemies four times. And what that means is that if there are four enemies within 480 range, she could be hitting up to four different people. And that's not really what you want, especially from like front to back comp, right? However, an interesting interaction is actually between your Sama Tamaki, who is not on the screen, and your Kuka. And the reason that this is interesting is because Kuka taunts and so like your Nozomi taunts as well. And so what's going to happen is that your Nozomi or like your Kuka are actually going to catch that Tamaki's UB fully. Now this could be a good thing or a bad thing. Your Sama Tamaki might be able to actually chunk through that Kuka depending on like the rest of the units. And in my opinion, it's probably best played this way because like your Sama Tamaki, like there's just too much RNG behind the UB. It's just not dependable because if you run it one time and it does it this way and then you run it another time and it does it like a different way, those two different ways could actually have two very very, very different outcomes where you might actually win in one of them because you killed like a Kuka or something. And on the other hand, you actually didn't win because you left the enemy Tamaki alive and that sniped your mage and then like it all goes bad, right? And so what I'm trying to say is that when the enemy Kuka or the Nozomi taunts your S Tamaki, it is actually a good thing because all of the damage is going into the Kuka and the Nozomi and you can make sure that it's going to happen every single time. And so since I brought up Nozomi and this is just an idea guys, because I always think about like the Nozomi and the Monica catching the Tamakis, right? If for example, we had a team like this. So let me just put it together real quick. So this is what we call your Turbo Eo. Turbo Eo because you've got your Yukari juicing up the Eo and then you've got the Monica speeding everybody up. And so what this means is that Eo actually gets her UB really, really fast and just like wrecks havoc on the other team. Now, the interesting thing about this team is that there are two mages. However, they are technically being protected by the Nozomi and the Monica because generally speaking, the only way to get to these two is by using a Tamaki. But if you have a Nozomi and a Monica, they are actually going to be able to catch that Tamaki. All of this action speed and all of like the damage taken on Nozomi gives her enough to actually UB before the Tamaki UBs. However, what if you attack this with a Sama Tamaki and so like the Nozomi actually loses some TP to be able to UB? And on top of that, what if you had another Tamaki on your team ready to go at those mages? So what I can imagine happening is that the Sama Tamaki steals the TP from the Nozomi, the Nozomi is not able to UB and then your Tamaki is able to UB. And when the Tamaki is UBing, nobody is going to stop her and she is going to kill off the Hatsune or the Eo depending on star levels. Honestly, sometimes I don't know if my brain is really, really big or really, really small. But that is kind of like one of the use cases that I'll be testing out first. I think that's probably going to be the main interaction that I'm looking at. But aside from that, to be honest, like Sama Tamaki, she doesn't bring overly much utility. And so it's really, really hard to say that she is going to be like a really good unit in Arena. And so with all of this in mind, her utility in Arena and her utility in Clan Battle or her damage overall, actually, is it really worth pulling for Sama Tamaki? Well, yeah, everyone should be getting free 110 pulls on the Sama Tamaki banner. And then after that, I'm thinking because like it's actually only technically 190 pulls to go to Spark. So if you actually have not pulled Sama Tamaki by 110 pulls, it might not be a bad idea to actually go all the way for her. On top of that, guys, remember that it is the half anniversary gacha. It is the prefez banner that's not called a prefez banner because we have the double three star draw rates. And so like all of this is culminating in my head and it's kind of like, well, it might actually be worth it to go all the way for the Spark. And so hopefully you might pick up a whole bunch of DAs or units that you don't already own. This one is still a work in progress. There is absolutely no reason that you should be sinking any 
20 pulls before all of the free pulls are actually done. But yeah, depending on how it goes, there is a chance that I'll do that and there is a chance that I might not. But it is an option and I did lay out like all of the reasons as to why I would do it. As for why you shouldn't, if you're running low on funds, you better be saving, dude. We've got Christina coming up. We've got New Year's Yui coming up. We've got H. Shinobu. We've got Muimi. These next few months are going to actually squeeze you so tight, my boys. But yeah, aside from that, like I'm very, very happy that we are actually going to be getting all of this. Oh, actually, last thing. I think I didn't talk about ranks. So in the scenario that you actually do pull Summer Tamaki, where should you let her sit? First of all, for stars, I'd probably go four stars, but that is only because of my like philosophy. In my opinion, a lot of limited units, if not all of the limited units, can go to four stars via DAs. And the reason for that is that their shards are not exactly farmable. And typically speaking, limited units are very, very strong. Furthermore, four stars is actually not that deep of an investment. It's technically like only 400 DAs. I think it's fine for her to go to four stars. However, if you don't have like the guarantee five star for Christina, I'd probably save on that as well. And on the topic of her 9-6 versus 10-3, and the reason I'm comparing to 10-3 is not because like 10-4 is not over here, but because 10-4, 4 just gives you like the armor piece. Generally speaking, you don't really want it, especially for CB. And CB is where Samatamaki is going to be predominantly used, even though I talked about her in Arena for so long today. But yeah, 9-6 versus 10-3. And so what we have is these stats over here, well, the stat differences. We've got a reduction in attack if you're 9-6. We've got an increase in your physical defense. We've got extra dodge, which is not exactly what we want. However, there is an additional bit of TP boost. And as always, guys, TP boost for attackers, they could be making or breaking the comp. However, in this scenario, I do recognize that she is losing a fair bit of physical capabilities. So I see the negative 103 physical attack and I see the negative 20 physical crit rate. My recommendation would be if you actually got to pull her to get to her to 9-6 at least. And on top of that, pre-farm her up to 10-3. I'm going to say just judging from like all of my initial research, like 10-3 is probably safe. But just to be really safe, go to 9-6 first and then see what your guild wants. But yeah, I think that actually sums up everything I wanted to talk about for Summer Tamaki. And so with that being said, let's start wrapping the video up. All right, guys, I got a secret message for you guys. And that is Wet Cat 2. We finally got our second Wet Cat. Look at her. She's so cute with all that foam on her head. Ah, huh, yeah. And so if you guys could drop that secret message, Wet Cat 2, down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means that you've actually watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you so much. But otherwise, please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow. You guys already know what it is. And if you would like to support the channel, there are a couple of different ways down in the description below. We've got some affiliate links. We've got like a membership thing in which you could actually get a couple of cool badges. But otherwise, as Summer Tamaki once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.